path. So, I, so like many people, I found myself in like a health predicament and I needed some changes. So I've, I've had health problems. I'm 33. I've had a health problem since I was about three. Started with asthma, um, grommets, adenoids taken out, um, constantly sick. And, you know, it just kind of all sorts of things over the years from glandular fever to bronchitis, uh, asthmatic, lots of antibiotic steroids over the years, just ch chock as full of became a pro at taking them. And then acne uh, when I was a teenager and being on Rakutane as well for that to get rid of the acne. And then it kind of just stopped for, you know, around 16. I didn't really seem to have problems from about 16 to, I don't know, like 19, 20. And then um, my dad passed when I was 17. He had a theresclerosis. He had a, um, well, that's what they say it was. He had a heart attack at 46 and he had a really, you know, intense, stressful lifestyle, gambling industry, you know, very unhealthy. And that put me on a bit of a health journey. I moved into, uh, I got into vegetarianism partially to impress this girl that was on MySpace and um, <laughs> admittedly, but she never knew. I didn't tell her. I was like, I just, I just felt like maybe if she would ask, then I'd have all this, you know, anyway, the things we do. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I learned about veganism through another friend and I was like, oh, okay, this makes so much sense. And so like ethically, that's where I was coming from was like, I became an ethical vegan. This is probably 2008. And then I moved into a yoga retreat. Um, so I moved into a yoga retreat uh, because I was partying a lot at this stage, like just lots of, lots of drinking, you know, recreational drugs and just really toxic. I was in a death metal band and, you know, it was very opposite to my lifestyle now. And yeah, I moved into a yoga retreat to basically live a, like change my lifestyle, went vegan in there. And then my health problems started to begin. And I started after to After the drugs. After you stopped the drugs. He <laughs> yeah. After I, yeah. <laughs> I stopped Vegas them. I should have stayed on them. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't, you know, yeah, it wasn't huge health issues to begin with. It was low energy, but- when you notice a significant dip in your energy, like it starts to dwindle, it's like, hang on. Cause I'd never experienced low energy before. So I went to a doctor, they, she's like, check your iron B12. I was like, all right, they were, you know, kind of low. We brought them up a bit with supplements, injections, whatever. Didn't really do anything. And it just kept getting worse. And so I went and saw an expensive raw food naturopath who put me on even more expensive supplements mm -hmm. and got me on raw foods and got me doing green smoothies and these things. And I felt even worse. So mm -hmm. I, I left the ashram at just about 20, trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with my health, started studying nutrition, mm -hmm. but I was lost cause for like, yeah, a good little while there. That was a really intense period. Uh, just got a question about where you were living. What's so you were living in some sort of yoga community? What, yeah, what an ashram. It was called the Satinanda Yoga Ashram. I'm not sure if they're still running anymore, but that was in uh, Mangrove Mountain in New South Wales. So I was there for about eight months. I wow. shaved my head. I took a spiritual name. I was wearing all white. It was cool. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what an experience. Totally. Totally. Hey, guys. Just want to take a second to thank our sponsor, Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly all you need to be healthy is just eat meat and that's what you should do but if uh, you're hiking or road tripping or stuck at work and you want something nutritious that is just meat and fat and possibly salt if you want it the carnivore bar is a great option i like this product not only because it is pure meat but also because i really want the carnivore market to thrive as well the more we support meat only products the more people will make meat only products and this will bring us into the mainstream so if this sounds like something you'd like to check out then Take a look and use my discount code HTC to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right. Thanks, guys. That's full on. So, sorry. So, so when did, so obviously you're getting a lot worse. Your health is, is really going downhill. And then what, how did you bring yourself out of that? Like, what was the progression there? So it kept going downhill, but it was like this up and down for years. So, I tried, I heard about, so I started eating meat again, uh, reluctantly. I started eating eggs, honey, yogurt, didn't really do anything. The only thing that helped was meat, but then I was still all over the place. I had like candida symptoms. I still had fatigue, brain fog, joint pain started to develop. And then I, 
I basically yo-yoed between normal whole foods, organic, uh, like organic whole foods and gluten-free and raw vegan and vegan. I moved between those for about from 2010 until 2016. I was just fluctuating, wasn't really improving. I found like I was able to manage the symptoms a little bit, but overall the joint pain was getting worse over the years. And I found like my window of tolerance of things that I could eat was getting smaller and smaller. And then I did vegan properly again for like 18 months, stacked on like 20 pounds, was fit, but I still felt horrible inside. And I just kind of gave up until last year. So this is like 13 years of yo-yoing, trying to figure out stuff with diet, literally had no clue, like no hope it felt like. And I tried a lot of things and, you know, naturopaths, doctors, a lot of people that I saw spent tens of thousands. I had no resolution. And then I started seeing like many people do all these videos of carnivore on TikTok, Reels, YouTube. I think the thing that sent me over the edge was Michaela Peterson's TED talk and just Mm -hmm. hearing about. It's like, oh, so if someone that has really chronic autoimmune stuff can reverse that, put into remission doing animal-based or doing carnivore, just meat, I'm like, maybe that can help with my stuff. Let's give it a go. And because I couldn't really eat anything without reacting any way, anything I'd eat, I'd break out in my skin or I'd have joint pain or I feel tired. So at that point, I just like, it was my 33rd birthday last year in August and I was excited to take on the world, but I was in sick in bed vomiting and I'm like, no, this is, um, this is it. So yeah, I, uh, decided to give it a crack for 24 hours and kind of as a joke, you know, how you see those videos of, I tried, I only eat Taco Bell for 24 hours. And <laughs> I thought, wouldn't it be funny to do the lime diet for 24 hours, you know, maybe <laughs> make a bit of viral content, see what happens. But I felt really good. And I'm like, oh, Thanks. all right, let's do it for 30 days. And uh, kind of, yeah, the rest is kind of history. So that's how I <laughs> got here, the long version, I guess. No, 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 that's great. So, so on that 30 days, can you, can you tell us, okay, so how are you feeling before and, and, and how are you feeling after? Like, what was your progression? What did you see as an improvement? Mm, so straight away, what I noticed was within two to three days, the joint pain was going down and I was, that was the first thing that I noticed. And that was really cool. I'm like, wow. All right. This is sweet. But it was, up and down throughout the whole time. Like I was really tired some days, partially because I was working a job plus making these videos that took me like four to five hours a day. Cause I was making, wow. you know, TikToks and Instagrams and posting it and they were going crazy. So I was like, all right, well, I've got to keep going with these videos. So I was doing very little sleep. I think if I did more sleep, I would have felt a lot better, but anyway. Um, so I was doing these videos, I was doing it daily and I, the joint pain first, and then the skin started to improve. And then I started to have this glow and I hadn't had this glow in my skin for who knows how long my eyes were whiter. I was feeling fabulous. What else? My brain fog, my mood was balancing, but then I, what day 17, 18, the, what do they call it? The keto flu, carnival flu, die off, whatever you want to call it. I was just sick for a couple of days. I felt like I got hit by a bus. I was ready to die and <laughs> it was just full on. And, uh, but I got through that after a couple Good. of days and um, yeah. So, but then, yeah, I, it wasn't really until like everything was improving. Bowel movements were good. My stench went away. So I didn't stink anymore. When I went to the toilet, when I sweated, I didn't smell which was the opposite of what I thought would happen, you know, because everyone thinks that when you eat only meat, you're just going to smell like a big rotting carcass. So Um, you did, did you have sort of like smelly, like BO and there was just smells before carnivore? Oh yeah. Yeah. My son, uh, he knew to not come near me if I went to the toilet or if I farted, everyone would have to get away. (laughs) Yeah. It was like full on, but now it's fine. So, um, yeah. but yeah, so yeah, it was notoriously stinky, but then, yeah, it was. <laughs> Thank God for I the video call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, you fixed it now. <laughs> so, yeah, but the, the 30 days was good. I noticed huge improvements in all areas. The, I didn't really have energy to work out or do any fitness stuff for a while. Cause like I was still figuring out how much meat do I eat? Mm-hmm. You know, like 
it's it was weird at first to eat more than like 300 grams of meat I'm like but mm. now i can you know probably eat up to a kilo if i really needed to i was hungry no problem like a couple of days ago i had like 300 grams i'm like is that it <laughs> you know mm. so it was that adjustment figuring out my hunger cues figuring out my macros and but around week six that's when my energy just and i'm like that's when I knew that this was working. This was life-changing and um, yeah, it's just kind of off to the races from there. Good. Yeah. And so you've been doing this strong for about a year now. Is that right? Um, six months. Six so months. I started in November and my goal was never to go like steak carnivore exclusively forever. Mm -hmm. Like I was really wanting to move into the gaps diet after that. Cause I heard that that was like the gut healing thing to do. And so mm -hmm everything I was doing from the part start included a lot of meat stocks and, you know, which is very heavy on the gaps diet around healing and, and that uh, uh, anti-inflammatory type stuff. And that was incredible. And then I was always trying to introduce foods with basically no luck. The only thing that I felt like I could actually eat was like sauerkraut juice, maybe a little bit of sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. So I basically ate meat for six weeks and then like chicken, lamb and beef, and then I tried egg yolks, didn't work. I tried butter. Butter and ghee were fine. That was really great. So now it's basically, I'm hovering around 95% carnivore, but some days I'm just, I just eat meat, you know, and butter and ghee. And I love those days. But the only thing that I'm eating that's not is probably oh, a little bit of sauerkraut, pumpkin, zucchini here and there, mm. you know. Um, but overall, yeah, it's, it's, um, I'd say carnivore-ish, mostly carnivore, but and, I, let's go for it, man. So, and, and so is the intention to try and introduce things, Rory, or what's mm. the, what, what are you kind of thinking? That's, that's the intention is to like, just kind of test and see what I could do and like, see what my body can tolerate. Like I'm really curious, but I've got this baseline that I hover around where I'm, I, my fallback now is typically carnivore. So that's kind of my baseline now is that uh but not like i don't want to introduce try and introduce foods with oxalates or you know mm. like those sorts of things i'm staying very 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 far away from those things so sticking i think very close to the carnival principles as possible because um, you know you, you've talked a lot, a lot about this anthony and um so i'm trying my best to stay away from that but it seems yeah. i seem to do okay with no reaction on pumpkin and zucchini. So I'm just, I'm just chilling there, you know? That's fine. You know, and, and the thing is too, is, you know, not, not everyone's heard everything and, and, you know, people can relay the same information in different ways and that strikes a different chord with different people. So, you know, don't, don't feel like you're repeating anything, you know, it's, it's, no, it's important for to know, you know, what your experience was and what you, you know, and the insights that you've taken from that. Um, you know, one thing I, I've sort of thought about with the, the GAPS diet is, the so carnivore is probably the ultimate gaps diet. It's the ultimate limit. It eliminates absolutely everything that you could possibly react with. Even some meats, you know, some people react to certain meats or eggs and dairy and things like that. And so, you know, if you get down really, really down to just grass fed and finished beef, I mean, I don't know anyone who hasn't been bitten by a tick who reacts to grass fed and finished beef, you know, and they only do it for like a couple of months and they're back in, back in action, but, you know, and, um, but I, I like that concept, you know, it's like eliminating out these things or these things that can cause harm. It's that concept that I think more people need to, to get behind that there are certain things in our diet that we're eating that we're not biologically predisposed to eat that are going to cause these problems and you eliminate them and you can eliminate the source of these problems. And I, I really like that mindset. Yeah, it's been a game changer. Hey, like just stripping everything away absolutely mm -hmm. everything to the number one thing that you can survive on which is meat mm -hmm. and just stripping it down and just seeing how it goes and shockingly well not shockingly once you know but you feel so good doing that and it's like do yeah. i stay here forever <laughs> it's like this yeah. is is this home yeah well i did yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have no interest and you know some people say well you know don't you find it hard you know that you have such a lot of discipline you know, staying with this for so long, I'm like, there's no discipline involved. I have no interest in ever feeling like that again, even though I, I felt what I thought was good. And I was able to perform at a high level, both physically, mentally, academically, and, and professionally. I, I, I feel nothing close to as good um, than as I do now. And so it's just, there's, it's just a no brainer for me. I just, you know, I want to feel great all the time. And so this is what I'm going to do.
Mm, I'm, I'm the same. I want to feel as good as I can and be as healthy as I can. Uh, and carnivore works for me. I know that uh, that Paul Mason said that he's carnivore out of hedonism. And people generally mm. think of hedonism as sort of like overindulging and seeking pleasure, et cetera. But he's doing it because he knows that if he sticks to beautiful fatty meat after every meal, he feels good. And uh, that's, I can really relate to that. I think you can too, Anthony. It's like, well, you get that good feeling and I just want to keep feeling that. And every time you kind of let yourself down, you're like, oh, it's going to take a few days to get back to feeling that real, you know, optimal way. Yeah. I, I even have nightmares now about eating carbs and like, I'll, like eat some like potato or something like that. In my gym, I'm like, Oh my God, what have I done? Like, crap, my back's going to kill me for the next like four days. Like, Jesus, all right, I get rid of this stuff. And I, and I won't even know it. It's just all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, Oh my God, I just ate that. Why did I eat that? And um, yeah. And so, you know, it's sort of funny when you wake up about how, how sort of silly that is, but you know, it's true. Like I, you know, if, if something like that gets in my diet, my back hurts bad for four days. And I don't like that. And uh, I think the last time that happened, I was at a restaurant, some like beans and rice got mixed in with the meat that I was eating. I was sort of trying to separate and scrape it off, but didn't didn't get it all the all the way done. And literally, like someone was stabbing me in the lower back for the next four days. I could I actually couldn't get out of bed normally. I had mm-hmm. to sort of position myself and work my way around and like my like I had completely thrown out my back or something like that, and like got up on all fours and sort of positioned myself up and then was able to get it up that way. And as long as I was sort of upright, I could maintain that, but it took four full days before that, that subsided to the point of, uh, you know, getting back to normal. And that's just, you know, hashtag not worth it. Like why, why for like some rice, like who cares? Like I just, and it was not even a lot of rice. It was like a little bit of rice. So, you know, that is just, that is just so not worth it to me. Um, you know, drinking alcohol, there's, there's more to that than like a bit of rice, you know, at least you get, you know, you get the, the effects of being drunk. People enjoy that. I certainly enjoy being drunk a lot yeah, more than I enjoy eating rice. I'll tell you that right now. And, you know, if, and so, you know, um, I just avoid that stuff. Completely. I don't, and I don't drink really either. I like every, you know, year and a half, two years, something like that. It's very rare and I pay the price and I, I don't feel my best for three weeks you know, but I, I go into it knowing that. And, um, you know, so you have, you have that sort of trade-off and every single time I do it, I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I do this? It's not worth it. Why? You know? Man, I'm with you there. Hey, yeah. Rory, what, what do your friends and family think about you switching to a, a carnivore diet pretty much? Well, because they've seen me months. try a lot of stuff over the years. They're just not surprised at what I'm doing. <laughs> so I think that's really helpful, but the, the only family members that were like, oh, that's kind of weird was my, um, on my son's mum's side. I don't know how to articulate that, but his, yeah, yeah. his, his grandparents, my son's grandparents, yeah. um, your, your in-laws. So, yeah. In-law, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Christmas, Christmas lunch, I get there and I'm like, Hey, I'm not going to be eating anything. I brought my own lamb stew. It was just lamb and water and salt. And it was incredible absolutely amazing wouldn't have traded it for anything and i explained i'm like i'm doing this because i actually have a lot of health issues and she's like but you eat so healthy and you eat organic i'm like Mm -hmm. yeah but Mm -hmm. you know i didn't really go into it because i just didn't want to go down that rabbit hole that day but i just Mm -hmm. said to her look i've actually had health issues for years i look healthy on the outside the reason i eat organic and eat all these things is because i feel unhealthy inside otherwise i just eat whatever and this is a really apparent i i i I get around pushback by saying apparently, you know, and by being a te- like testing it, right? And now I'm I'm more of an evangelist, so I'd be a lot more direct. But then it was like, oh, apparently this is the most you know anti-inflammatory diet, and I've got really chronic joint pain and inflammation, so I'm giving it a crack. And they're like, oh, okay. And uh, and then when they found out that it's helped, they were like, oh, they kind of came around a bit. But, you know, no, my immediate good. family at home, very supportive because they've seen the benefits as well. They're like, man, this is this has literally been the best thing I've done in the last 14 years of my health. So and they're on board. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And then so what about what about your your immediate family and um, your son and everything like that? Well, how has, has that affected their diet as well? He eats more meat now. Mm-hmm which is good. Uh, he's never really been a big meat eater. He mm-hmm. loves dairy. He's a dairy fiend, that boy, but I understand that. But 
uh, hasn't really affected them. They have more bone broths or more meat stocks now, mm-hmm. and they are having more meat dishes as I cook them, but it hasn't really affected. Like I've always cooked three meals anyway, because mm-hmm. we've all had different things. So it's just normal really? for me to cook. It hasn't really affected the, that mm-hmm. much, except the fact that I have a lot more brain space because I know what I'm having for dinner. It's meat. And I know what I'm having for breakfast and lunch. It's just, it's just meat. But for them, I get to put more time in for their food. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I mean, even just that influence of seeing you eating a lot more meat, I mean, they're obviously going to care about that. You know, their dad, who they really care about is doing a lot better, is much more healthy. And he's just eating that way. That's going to influence them. Yeah. And that's going to slowly but surely, you know, in, you know, make them start thinking, well, maybe I should try this. And, and even just eating more meat, it, you know, it's already there. It's already getting in their head. And just understanding that meat is not bad, that fat is not the enemy, that that is such an important life lesson to understand uh, as a kid growing up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's very much learnt. Like he, he, he would say to me, he's so cute. Sometimes he would say the healthiest food is apples. I'm like, Oh, well, some people would say that, but you know what I reckon? I reckon the healthiest food on the planet, you've got your, your meat and your meat stock. And, and then it trickles down He's like, and then a couple of weeks later, he's like, dad, you know what the healthiest food is? I'm like, what? He says, meat stock broth and then meat. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. He, it's so clever of him to work that out as well all by himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, and that, and that just lays down these habits for a lifetime, you know, like the, uh, that, I mean, it got so much scorn in America and, and deservedly so, but that, um, that doctor that was, you know, government official, I think she was from Stanford, shockingly enough maybe not but anyway she was um you know she was a government official a doctor and she said that um you know don't worry about you know uh diet and exercise and things like that for obesity there's nothing you can do it's just genetic you know i was like wait what <laughs> like when, when when has that been a thing um you know saying well 80 percent of people if your parents are obese you have an 80 percent chance of being obese so that's just genetic there's nothing you can do about it. oh well then just eat all the hoes and candy you want then doesn't matter you know and um You'll either be a, you know, Mr. Olympia or, or you won't, you know, but it has nothing to do with anything that you, you know, any choices you make in your life, which is just insane. You know, you're taking, you're taking, you're taking away a lot of control out of people's lives. First of all, it can be very defeatist. And also you're just justifying people just doing that. Ah, doesn't matter anyway. I'm just going to smoke, drink and eat candy. Doesn't matter anyway. So why should it, why should I t- change my behavior? And, um, and of course that's wrong. You know, I mean, you learn these behaviors from your parents and then they they carry on with you as an adult and of course that's why there's this 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 run of obesity in families because you learn these behaviors from your parents and sometimes you learn the opposite sometimes you you learn what not to do but a lot of times you you grow up and you're eating these ways and you have these same problems and you know type 2 diabetes is the same thing type 2 diabetes has has a much stronger familial uh, relation than type one diabetes. Now there could be genetic components with that, but I think it's absolutely the case that there's a strong environmental, you know, habitual um, uh, pattern that people learn as kids that carry on into adulthood, and you know, and you can you can pick up diabetes from that. Mm, it reminds me of that quote. Uh, what is it? They say obesity runs in the family, but it's the problem is no one runs in the family, kind yeah. of thing, right? <laughs> it's yeah. because yeah, it's, it's habitual. We learn off our parents, even subconsciously habits, everything. So yeah, I'm, I'm hundred percent with you. It needs to start from the top down. Mm, yeah. And uh, yeah, well, that's great. You know, so I, you know, it's only been six months, mm. you know, give it a, give it a year. We'll see, you know, kids just, you know, taking T-bones to school. You never know. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, totally. Hey, Rory, how's carnivore affecting other parts of your life, like your uh, like work, family, mental health, all that? So much. It's like I said, it's been literally the best thing I've done for my health in the last 14 years of just trying all sorts of things. Nice. And it's helped me with my emotions and my mood swings. I didn't realize how like moody and angry I was before. And it's helped me level out. So as a result, I'm more pleasant to be around and I'm uh, a better father as well. It's it's helped me a lot around my mental health because 
if you've got a problem you're trying to solve for 14 years and you think about it every day and you're worried about how you're going to feel every time you eat, it takes mm. up a lot of brain space. So it opened up a lot of brain space for me and not worrying about food for the first time in 14 years. I can't stress how mm. unstressful that is. It's so good. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's sweet. Um, what else? It's it, it also revealed like a bunch of like underlying issues that I didn't realize that I had as well. So because I was always feeling like crap from stress around diet to, that was kind of one of the main things, but that was gone. And then I realized, hang on, like my nervous system is fried. I am like so dysregulated. I am all over the place with my nervous system constantly in freeze response or shutting down all over the place in sympathetic and I really I was like, one of my friends is a like a somatic um, trauma therapist. And she's like, these are all like trauma responses, Rory. And so I started working with her and doing like work around my nervous system and um, learning about how that affects the gut. And so once I started to do that, and I wouldn't have figured that out if I didn't do carnivore, that on top of it, I am like a superhuman. I'm unstoppable. So it's, it's been really helpful with that. And that's taken my mental and personal emotional health to the next level. And that's something that I didn't really hear about much until, yeah, I, I think I started feeling good. So that's been probably one of my favorite things I would say, definitely. And career wise, unexpectedly, uh, I now make food videos and content. <laughs> and uh about what i do so i do this um full-time now as well so that's an unexpected benefit uh, oh that's, that's really awesome. good yeah, yeah. That's really 